In this video, we will see how we can sort our one-dimensional arrays um, in place using a method called selection sort. And what we mean by in place, it means we are not using another array to store the array elements. We are going to sort the arrays in the same array that we have. So for example, if we have this array that has four elements, at location zero, we have 17, at location one, we have 26, at location two, we have five, and at location three, we have the number two. When we want to sort it in an ascending order, that means we will have two in the first location, five in the second, 17 in the third, and 26 at the last fourth location, which is at index three. So ascending um, sort means we are going to start with the lowest element, the smallest element, and we'll end up with the um, largest element or the maximum value at the end. So how does the selection algorithm work? We start by finding the maximum element in our array. Once we find that maximum element, which is the element 26 at location one, we want to switch that element with or swap it with the um, last element in the array. So since this is the maximum element, when we sort the array, it has to be the last element in this array. So we, we are going to swap the maximum element with the last element we have in the array. So if we swap them, we have 26 at the end and two is going back to um, index one, which is the place we had the maximum element before. Once we are done with this step, that means we have this part of the array sorted. The last element now is in place. The last element is the maximum element and we have the remaining elements as unsorted. So since we have this part is so as sorted, we do not need to worry about it anymore. The only thing we need to do is to repeat the same first two steps on the um, unsorted part of that array. So once we switched the places, we had the maximum element at the end of the array. This part is already sorted. We only need to worry about this part, which is the unsorted part of that array. So we'll repeat the first two steps, which is finding the maximum element and swapping the maximum element with the last element. However, the last element now is not this one. The last element is the one we have in the unsorted um, array part. So again, the last element is now sorted, so we do not look at it. We only look at this part of this array. So we want to find the maximum element in this part. The maximum element is at location zero, which is the value 17. Then we want to do the second step, which is swapping this maximum element with the last element. Now the last element of the unsorted array is this value at location or index two. So we want to swap that maximum element with the value at location two. Since we have that now as sorted, so this part of the array is sorted, 17 and then 26 are in their um, correct locations in the sorted array. And this part is now unsorted and that's where we will be repeating the first two steps again on this part. So 17, 26 are in their correct positions. We only need to worry at, about this part, which is the unsorted part. We try to find the maximum element in this part, which is element um, or the value five at location zero. We want to swap that element with the last element in this unsorted array or unsorted part of the array, which is at location one. So we swap them. And now we have this part of the array as sorted and we only have one element as unsorted in, in here. Now we want to repeat the same two steps again for the unsorted part. However, since we only have one element left, we do not need to swap anything and that means the full array is now um, sorted. So how are we going to do this in Java? We will be doing the same steps again. So we will be finding the maximum element, which we know how to do now, but only for the unsorted part. So we are not going to go from zero up to the length minus one. We are going to uh, from zero up to the last element of the unsorted um, array. And we'll see how we do that in Java in a bit. The second step is to swap the elements. We want to swap the maximum value with the last element in the unsorted part of the array. So the swapping is only happening between the maximum value and the last element in the unsorted part. And then we keep repeating this operation. So we will have a for loop until we do not have any um, unsorted elements left. And that's when we get the sorted um, array. So let's see how we can find the maximum element in, um, in Java in here. So I'm going to create a method called max and this method will return the location of that maximum element. So I'm gonna create a public static and this method will return an index. So it's returning an integer. 
and let's call it max. And this method will take an array. So it will take, let's assume we are sorting an integer array. So integer two square brackets, and let's call this array array. And this is the array that we are going to find the maximum value in. However, we, not, we are not always looking for the maximum value in the full array. We are looking every time at a different size of that array. So the first time we started, for example, we started with four elements. The next time we will look at only three elements. So another value that I will pass as a parameter is actually the length, which is not the length of the array. This is the length of the unsorted part of the array. So the number of elements we are going to look at in this um, array. So we can start like we did before by assuming that the maximum element is at location um, zero. So the index, let's call it index, is actually um, zero. So we are starting at location zero. Now we will have a for loop to iterate through the remaining elements of the array. So integer i, we start with location one. And then while i is less than not the array dot length, the length of the unsorted part. So this is the length that we passed. While i is less than this length, we are going to increment the value of i, i plus plus. What are we going to check for each element? If that element at location i, so array at location i, if it's greater than the array at location max, which is our index. So if our array at location i is greater than the current maximum value, in that case, my index or the location of the maximum element will be i. Otherwise, we will just ignore it and skip to the next value. And then when we are done with the full loop, we will be returning that index. So let's actually try this method out. Let's create in the main method, let's create an integer array. So int two square brackets array, and let's fill this array with an initialization list. Let's have two, um, 17, um, 55 and 25. These are our elements. And let's call that method max, which will return the location of the maximum element. We can actually print that result. So system dot out dot print line. And we want to find the maximum of that array. So we'll pass the array as one, the first parameter, and then the length of um, that array that we want to sort. Now, if we want to look at the full array, we have four elements. So we are passing um, four. So that will find the maximum of these four elements, the location of the maximum um, element in this full array. So if we run this um, code, you'll see that the maximum element is at location two. So zero, one, two, this is the maximum element, which is the value 55. Now, if we look at three elements, these are the three elements. We will still have at location two because 55 is the maximum value. So if we run it now, you'll see that the maximum element is at location um, two. If we look at only two elements, the maximum of these two first two elements will be actually this element, which is at location one. So if we run this code, you'll see that the maximum value is at location one. If we only look at one element, there's nothing to compare with. You'll see that we only have one element. So this is actually our uh, maximum element, which is at location zero. Now we are not doing any swapping yet. So we are still getting um, that um, value 55. If we check four elements, if we check three elements, we are also getting 55 because we are not swapping. So the next step will be is to actually do the swapping part, which we'll look at um, now. So now that we are done with the finding the maximum value, we want to swap the maximum value with the last location of the unsorted array. Now swapping does not happen in one step. We cannot say that the element at location A has to go to B, and then by default, the element at location B will go to A. If we do A goes to B, the value at location B will be erased and replaced with the value A. So both locations now will have the value A, and we will lose the, um, the value that we had in location B. So to be able to do um, this swap, we can store this um, value at location B in a temporary location or the value at location A, we can store it in a temporary location before we do the swap. So to swap elements A and B, the first step is to define a temporary variable. We can call it temp, um, assign the element A to the va a variable temp. So we have a copy of A. And now when we put the value B into the location A, a will be erased from that location. However, we still have A um, stored in the temporary place temp. So we did not lose A. 
we still have a copy of A. So when we place B at the location where A was, now both, both these locations will have B, but we still have a copy of A stored in the temporary um, location. Now we will do the last step, which is getting A from that temporary location and place it and get in the location that we had um, B in. So if we look at it here, let's say that we want to swap um, 26 with the value 2, so the maximum value with the last location. The first step was to create a temporary um, integer called temp. So we are creating a place in the memory called temp. We will copy the value at location 1, which is the maximum value. So we will copy it at location 1, the value at location 1, we will store it at temp. So temp equals the value at location 1. So we'll move, make a copy from temp and place it, or from 26 and place it in temp. The next step, we'll move the value from location 3 and copy it, paste it in location 1. So array at location 1, the value in location 1, we want it to be equal to the value at location 3. So whatever we have here, we'll place it in here. So that will move to, to 26 and that actually replaced 26. So you'll notice now both locations have the value 2. So if we did not copy the value 26 here, we actually lost the value 26. And that's why we needed to copy the value 26 um, to the temporary value. Now, since we have this copy, we will now want to place it in location three. So array at location three will now equal to the value at um, the temp, which is the value 26. So we'll move the value 26 and place it at the location three. So this is how we did the swapping. We created the temporary value. We copied whatever we had at location one to that temporary value. We copied the value we had at location three to temp, um, place or to the location one. And then we moved the temp to um, location three and this is how we did the swapping. So we only needed, after defining the um, temporary location temp, we only needed three steps to do this copy um, to not lose any um, values from that array. So let's go back here and do the swapping. So instead of printing the um, location of the maximum element, I'm going to store the location of that maximum element in an integer. So I'm going to create an integer and let's call it max index. And I'm going to call the maxim max method past the array that we created here with the length and the length. Let's give it the full array. So array dot length. So now we will find the maximum element in this full array and we are storing the index of that maximum element in this location. So now that I know this element at this location, I want to swap it with the element at the last location. So the element at the last location will be at the length minus one. So this is where I will be swapping. So we said the first step is to define a temporary location. So I'm gonna create a temporary integer. We'll store the value we have in that maximum location in that temporary location. So temp will be equal to the array at the max index. So we made a copy of that element, the maximum element. And then we want to copy the element at the last location and place it in the, where the uh, maximum value was in this array. So the array at the maximum index now will be equal to the array at the last location. So array at array.length minus one. Remember, if you do not put minus one, you will get an array out of bounds exception. Now we did the first part of the swap. We moved this element to this location. So both of them now have the value 25. Now we want to get the old value, which is 55. We want to place it here. So the array at the last location, so array at array.length minus one, will be equal to the temporary value that we had um, stored. Let's try to print this array after we did the swap. So we can have a for loop. We start from zero. So i equals zero. i is less than the array dot length. And then i plus plus to increment the or go to the next element. And I'm just going to print the element. So system dot out dot print. And I'll print the array at location i. And then I'll leave a space between each element. So we'll concatenate it with a space. So if you run this code now, you'll see we did the swapping. Now we still have the first two elements in their same place, but the last element is now 55 and the element before that is 25. And that's what we need in here. So the next step is to repeat all this operation again, but only on this, these three elements. So now we have sorted the last element 
and now we have these three elements. So we want to call the max method on the array, but not the full array dot length. We want to go minus one. So we want to decrement this by one. We keep decrementing until we reach the zero element. So we only have one element. So element at location zero where we have one element. So how can we do that? We'll actually use a for loop. So when we call instead of calling for this full array dot length, we can create a for loop. So for we start with integer i equals zero, and then i is less than the array dot length, and then i plus plus. Now when we call this method, let's put all this code in in these curly braces. So now when we call that method max, we are passing the array and not the array dot length. Now the array dot length minus i. So the first time we start, i is equal to zero. So we are actually passing the full array. The next time it will be one. So array dot length minus one. So it will not be four elements now. It will be three. The next time minus two. So it will be two until we reach um, the value length. So array dot length minus array dot length. We have zero elements and that's where we will stop. So when we run this, we also want to swap. We are not swapping with the last element minus one or the array dot length minus one. We also want to have minus i in here. And we also want to have minus i in here. So let's try to run this and see if it actually sorts our array. And you'll see it actually sorted the array 2, 17, 25, and 55. So again, we started with zero. We sort the array from the location zero up to the length minus zero, which is the full array. The next time we run it, it will be minus one, then minus two, minus three, until we reach minus length. And then we are swapping. We are not swapping with the last element in the array. We are swapping with the last element of the unsorted array. So the last element of the unsorted array, the first time we run it is the length minus one. So the index four minus zero, which is this index. Then we'll go to the next value, so minus one, so it will be this index, then this index, and then we will reach the last index, which is at zero. So one last improvement we will have on this for loop is to actually um, not execute when we only have one element left. When we have this condition, i is less than array.length, the last time we will be executing this, um, this for loop is when we have um, one element left, so i is equal to three. So length minus three. So if we have four minus three, we have one element. So we do not need to find the maximum of one element because we know that um, that's the only element and that's the maximum element. So instead of going up to the array dot length, we want to go to up to the array dot length minus one. So the last time we will be executing is when we have i equal to two, which is having two elements left in that um, array.